Hey, this is Fred Lamb, and listen, if you are currently running a drop shipping or a Shopify business, this video is going to be super important for you as I'm going to review three quick fixes on your Facebook ad that you can actually generate more sales or lower your cost per purchase. That being said, let's really dive right in into what these three quick fixes are. And in fact, these are actionable steps that you can actually take and start seeing results for your Shopify store. So first of all, the first quick fix is simply using the correct purchase conversion events. A lot of people, when they first start out running their Shopify store and those that are drop shipping, Oftentimes, you are running the incorrect objective. Now, again, everyone knows that we should be going after the conversion and we want Facebook to optimize our ads up of the purchase conversion. That is absolutely true, but there's a deeper layer to it that everyone overlooked and hence it will actually have you get worse result when you are advertising multiple products within your Facebook ad account. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you actually take a look over here right now, there's a direct comparison. Most people, when they're starting out to create their first Facebook ad or they're new to creating their drop shipping business with Shopify, they simply choose the purchase events. Now, nothing wrong with that, especially when you're getting started. However, Throughout your entire process, this is actually setting you up to fail. The correct objective that you want to go after is called a specific product conversion. So you don't want to tell Facebook to optimize up of all the purchases in your store. You want to be specific on what you want Facebook to help you get more sales on. And this is very important. If you look right here in the screen, right at the bottom, you'll see that we're able to change to an SOS kit. So let's say that when we're advertising an SOS kit, we want Facebook to optimize our ads to get us more SOS kit. We don't want more purchases of the entire store, which is great, but when you start to have more products, more ads right in your Facebook ad account, it will confuse the algorithm and it will confuse your Facebook pixel. So let me actually explain this more in detail in drawing format so you understand what is going on. So I'm actually going to open up my scribble pad right now and I'm actually going to draw this out as we speak. So I'm just going to randomly say, hey, let's say that you're going after the men accessory niche. Okay. So your first objective is to, let's say that you want more sale of your watch. All right. This is your watch. This is what we're doing. So if you're just advertising the watch, then what you are doing is simply going after a person on Facebook to simply see your ad right on Facebook. That is all about the watch. And when they click on your ad, they simply go to a product page that is all about the watch that they can obviously buy. And from here, let's say that we're going to skip the initiate checkout. We're going to say that this is the thank you page they have bought from you. So when you're new to Shopify drop shipping, this is fine. You're just advertising one particular product. So you're basically going from Facebook, going to the ad and it's all about the watch and you're simply having the product page all about the watch. And also you are going to the thank you page. Now throughout this entire process, what is happening is that there are a lot of data that actually runs back right into Facebook from the ad itself, from people going to your product page and also your thank you page. Facebook aggregate all these data. Now, on the other hand, let's say that you decide to start selling a tie. All right, let's say that this is a tie. I'm just trying to draw it out really nice. Let's say this is a tie. All right, I'm not a really good, nice draw. Let me draw a stick man, by the way. So let's say that you're advertising a tie now. Your watch is doing well, you're now advertising a tie. Now, again, the process is going to be distinct. You have a tie, 
end, you have your ad, and then it goes to the Thai page, and they can buy, and it goes to the thank you page. Now, right on the thank you page, obviously all these data are going back right into Facebook, right? They're all getting all these information for you to get more pixel data to under so Facebook understand what your ultimate objective is. Now, here's going to be the problem. The problem is, is that when you start advertising more products, when you're testing more products in your store and you're trying to find that winning product, these two pages shares the purchase event. So the standard purchase event, these pages, because it is going to that one specific, I should say one generalized thank you page, what's gonna happen is that all the data, regardless if they buy the watch or if they buy the tie, you're basically getting all the data into here. So when you're going after just the purchase conversion event, what's gonna happen is that Facebook may optimize your ads that you're using the tie for, maybe they're optimizing off of simply this, or they may be optimizing this off of this. So it starts to confuse the Facebook pixel on exactly what is happening. Remember, when you're running Facebook ads for your Shopify store, you gotta create a linear process. So instead of basically going after this general purchase event, for every single product, what you want to do is you want to create a specific purchase conversion. So what you're going to be telling Facebook is that, hey, Facebook, here's basically what I want. I want you to get me more sale for my watch. Here's my ad and here's my landing page. I don't care any other purchases except for my watch. And the reason why is because, again, your entire linear funnel is selling the watch. And you're simply getting Facebook to optimize off of just the watch itself. By using a specific product version, you are going to actually get way better result than simply using the purchase event, especially when you're running an e-commerce business selling multiple products. So each product that you advertise, remember, you got to create a specific product conversion. And this quick fix will make a drastic impact right into your sales. Now, you might be wondering, well, I don't know how to do this. How am I able to solve it? Well, there's one app that we created. It's called Pixel Bay. We created this because we encounter the same problem. We had two products, two winning products, using one Facebook ad account, one store, and we can never get these two products to do well at the same time. It's either product A that's doing well and product B just suck, or product B does well and product A really suck. So I did a lot of investigation to actually figure out that what I was doing, optimizing up of the standard purchase events, it's confusing the Facebook algorithm, hence we're not getting the results simultaneously at the same time. And with Pixelbay, it is an approved Shopify app that you can get. It allows you to create a product catalog feed on Facebook to connect it with your store products and also your Facebook Pixel. So basically all the products in your store is also going to be right inside Facebook. So Facebook has all the information they need about your store. And you can also create a specific product conversion and specific custom audiences of those who bought a particular product, all that is in there. And they have a full tutorial on how to set this up. So let me actually do a quick demo on what you should be doing. So let's say that you already got, um, you already got Pixel Bay, and once you're in here, all you gotta do is create a new conversion. And let's say that we're just gonna randomly sell like a product right here. We're just gonna go after, I don't know, I'm gonna go after, this is a demo store by the way for me for demo purposes. So let's say we're going after the three in one survival whistle. I'm gonna go after people that purchase these select products. So I said bots um, whistle. And then let's say that I'm selling this for 10 bucks. I just put in the conversion and you create the conversion right from there. Once the conversion is created, Okay, what you want to simply do next is to go right into your Facebook accounts 
and you simply create a brand new campaign. Now remember, when you're running on Shopify and you're trying to get more purchases, you always want to choose conversion. I'm going to turn on CBO, which is campaign budget optimization, and I'm going to click on continue. So right in the conversion event, all I have to do is now select back the specific product conversion that I've created. So I'm just looking for it right now, right here. So when it's red, it is fine. It's just that Facebook doesn't have data going into it yet. If it's red or, yeah, if it's red, it's absolutely fine. But once you actually got a sale, what's gonna happen is that it will turn into green. So this is what you want to do. Now, when you're creating your ad, make sure that you are advertising this specific product. So Facebook will optimize to get you more sale for this particular product. So now let's talk about quick fix number two. Quick fix number two is to simply have short links before the see more button. So before I go that, let me actually do some bragging right now. One of my students just sent me this the other day, 14 days, in just 14 days, I should say, he made over $2,000 in profit. He actually spent $93 in ad and made $2,300 back. So pretty exciting stuff. Definitely want to actually share and brag that and to impress upon you that seriously, anyone can actually build a business online. And if you continue to follow my channel, you will get more details on how to do so. And also I have a free course for every single one of you that are watching right in the video description. So grab it right now. So now again, let's go back into quick fix number two. So with quick fix number two, we talk about having a short link before the see more link. Now, the reason why you want this is because Facebook made a big update recently. They want to actually fix the high CPM issue that advertisers are facing. So they're forced to actually make this update so that advertisers can continue to afford the advertising spend right on Facebook. So what did they do? They made a drastic change in all the ads. Previously, your ad right at the post text, you have seven lines of text, but now Facebook changed it to only three lines of text that really helped them open up more inventory and allow them to create more ad to actually lower the CPM across all advertisers. However, because now you only have three lines of text instead of the seven, before the see more URL, the first three line of text is superbly important. So for those of you that have been running your ads before this change and update has happened, you may want to actually change your ad copy right now. We even change our ad copy and I'm gonna actually show you exactly what the new ad copy is for you to run and get the most out of your Facebook ad. So here's the new ad copy template that we're using. On line number one, we simply just use one emoji and one sentence as a hook. Now with the hook, what you're doing is that you're using one sentence right away to get the interest of your audience. And you wanna use emotional selling, okay? You wanna sell based on emotion and also you wanna show solution to the problem right away. For example, you can say one weird gadget can fix all your electricity problem, right? You, it gets the person's interest and it also talks about a solution to a problem that people are facing. Line number two, I usually have it as a space so that it makes the ad look nice and not all clogged up. Line number three, I simply use the shot now and then an arrow pointing to a short link before to see more link. And last but not least, right afterwards, after the see more link, you can do whatever you want. You can actually say what the offer is and you wanna basically create urgency. And we use what we call the IDA formula in our ad to continue to get the attention, interest, desire, and action right within our ad copy. But now why use short link? Well, you actually get an additional hyperlink in your post text, which will get you higher click-through rate. People are psychologically trained to actually see a blue 
text with line under it as a hyperlink. That link gives you the opportunity to simply just click on it and allow people to simply go to another website. And it actually helps you with your click-through rate. And we also have limited space now in our ad. And you don't want to enter your entire URL because that's going to be very long. So that's why you want to use short link. Now, the short link that we use is actually called Tiny. You can actually go to www.tiny.ie or there's a link right in the video description for easy click right now so you don't have to write this down. Now, why do we use Tiny? It's because first of all, Tiny secures your data. Unlike Bitly, if you see an ad with Bitly on it, simply put a plus sign right after the link and you will actually see all the information. How many clicks there is, when did the ad go up, and even the location that they are targeting. So definitely, you don't want your competitors to obviously know that. Now, unless if you want to save a buck or two, then obviously you can use Bitly. It is absolutely going to find. With Tiny, you also allow you to split test your URL. You can split test your price. You can split test the color of your button. A lot of different things can be done with Tiny. And also, for those of you that are really building a brand, with Tiny, you can actually create a branded domain and a branded short link for a fraction of what other people are charging. So definitely check it out. And there's a ton more other features right inside Tiny. So that said, here's a copy of how an ad should look like. Right at the top, you'll see it is a one sentence hook with one emoji. This one weird gadget change, uh, charge all your electronics about electricity. Get yours, a link, all right, sorry, the emoji of the right, and then the link. So again, everything is needed. This is how you should be creating your ad copy nowadays. Now, so far, if you got a lot of amazing golden nuggets and you love what you're learning, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, click that notification bell once you click on subscribe so that each time I release a brand new video, you're gonna get notified right away. I'm trying to do everything that I can to release a video every Wednesday and Sunday to continue to help you with your business. So do it right now, click on that subscribe button and click on that notification bell. Now we're going to talk about the quick fix number three, which is to run all placements. Now, first of all, you need to remember this. You got to let Facebook machine learning do its job. Facebook wants you to let their machine do all the work. When I was on a call with one of my Facebook reps, he basically said the ultimate goal with Facebook ad is to simply give them the ad, give them the landing page and let Facebook do all the other heavy lifting. And it also helps you lower your CPM when you run all placement. If you run specifically to one placement, let's say desktop newsfeed, it will cost you far much more on the same placement when you're running all placement. And that also said, when you're running all placements, it actually opens up more ad spots for you and more opportunity while lowering your CPM. So remember, Facebook's ultimate goal is to help you find customers at the lowest cost possible, regardless of what placement. Their machine learning is smart to actually identify who at what stage, at what placement will most likely buy your product. So you want to leverage Facebook's multi-billion dollar infrastructure to help you with your business. So that said, remember, run all placement. But what I'm going to tell you next may sound a little bit contradicting. Because if you're just starting out and you're trying to see if the product works or not, you want to run one specific placement first to actually see if the product has potential or not. Once you got the data and it is doing well using my 3x3 app formula, then what you want to do next is when you start creating more ads, going after more targeting, then you want to actually run all placement, which will lower your CPM and help you get better results. So again, these are the three quick fixes and I really hope that you implement them and share your feedback right in the comment box right below. I'll see you in our future video.